From its inception, IBOA aimed to provide a social outlet for its members as a way of building solidarity between bank officials from different and often competing institutions. In the summer of 1919, for example, 80 bank officials in Dublin had travelled out to Talla, then in the countryside, for a picnic and races, followed by music and song in a nearby ballroom. In Cork, 34 bank officials visited Ringabella in August 1919. The pattern was repeated around Ireland with picnics, car drives and dances. By October 1921, the Irish Bankers Club was up and running, having had 250 expressions of interest from Dublin-based members and 100 from those in the country areas. While dances, concerts and card playing were the staples of the IBOA's winter activities, Sport came to the fore during the summer. In time, this led to the establishment of a whole range of interbank competitions in sport, notably in rugby. Throughout the 1920s, there was growing interest in the golf competition played for the Den Roach Cup, which had been donated by the organising secretary. Many bank officials were also making their mark with Irish international teams, including rugby, water polo and chess. The range of social and cultural activities engaged in by IBOA members continued to broaden in the 1930s with the establishment of literary, dramatic, choral and debating societies and even a Dublin Bank's fencing team. The expansion of the Bankers Club on Stephen's Green had continued through the decade. The premises now included a reading room, a writing room, a library, a lounge, a bar, recreation and card rooms, a billiard room, and a dining room, and in 1939 a squash court was added. Elsewhere, IBOA members in Belfast opened their own bankers club at Donegal Place. In the post-war years, the growing diversity of social and sporting activities promoted by IBOA continued apace both nationally and locally. An interbank Gaelic football cup was launched in 1950 as an annual event, while a similar hurling competition followed in 1961 featuring many prominent senior inter-county stars. Another innovation was the admission of women as members to the Bankers Club. Before the 1950s, no Lady Clark qualified for membership, but at the Union's AGM in 1952, it was agreed that women would now be admitted to the Bankers Club, with a room set aside for their exclusive use. Once the door had been opened to Lady Clark's, the world of the Bankers Club was changed utterly. The decades which followed heralded even greater change. The club became the place where, in the words of one former Royal Bank employee, Terry Wogan, the real bankers of Ireland met. This was where they came for shelter and succour from the misery of their bedsits and boarding houses. The Bankers Club was where they were sure of meeting people as badly off and as lonely as themselves. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, dances, music nights, quizzes, fashion shows and other events continued to feature in IBOA's social life, along with a rare evening with Dublin playwright Brendan Behan. These events provided further opportunities for members in different employments to socialise as did sport. The union believed that the medium of sport could help bank officials to appreciate that for all the intense competition that existed between rival banks, there was more that united members than kept them apart. Each year, the union published a calendar of national sporting fixtures. Below national level, individual districts and individual sports made their own arrangements. The sheer diversity of sports meant that there was something for everyone like snooker, darts, chess and card games, swimming and 10-pin bowling. In summer, the focus moved outdoors to field sports like hurling, Gaelic football and soccer, as well as athletics, golf and a range of other individual pursuits including angling. The union also encouraged participation in major sporting events like the Belfast and Dublin City Marathons. Many bank employees combined work with a high sporting profile. In January 1980, for instance, the Union magazine ran a special feature on six women golfers, all of them bank employees, and each of them an international player at either junior or senior level. 
The most celebrated of them was Mary McKenna, who worked for Bank of Ireland in Dublin's College Green. In recent years, many more IBOA members have distinguished themselves in the world of sport, and especially Gaelic games, including All-Ireland winners like Sean O'Gohalpi, Colm Cooper, Kieran Donaghy, Keith Higgins, John Gardner, Adrian Ronan, and the legendary Brendan Cummins. In 2006, the Dublin Bankers Club relocated with the union to new premises on Stephen Street Upper, IBOA House. The club's new accommodation, though well furnished, had a much smaller footprint than when it was operating at its peak in Stephen's Green, reflecting the gradual decline in the popularity of many of the union's sports and social activities in the face of competition from a wide range of counter-attractions. In recent years, the main focus of the union's sporting and social endeavours is on the annual Family Zoo Days in Dublin, Belfast and Photo Island, which continue to draw thousands of members and their families who enter free of charge. The union also offers reduced rate admission each Christmas to pantomimes in Dublin, Belfast and Cork. In addition to these communal events, the union also supports the social lives of its members through special discounts on cinema and concert tickets, which members can choose to attend individually rather than as part of an identifiable FSU group. While the era of peak sporting and social activity may now be over for the Union, the need to build solidarity among an increasingly diverse membership remains a challenge for FSU. Bringing members together virtually through social media may serve a similar function in the future as the efforts at bringing members together physically through sport and other activities in the past. One of the keys to the endurance of the Union over 100 years has been its ability to regenerate continually by attracting new members, and especially young members. From its earliest days, IBOA encouraged younger workers in banking and finance to join the Union. Although at times in the ensuing decades, junior officials may have been disappointed with the outcome of pay talks for tending to favour senior and long-serving employees, it was not for the want of effort on the union's part. One notable pay settlement for younger members was negotiated by the union in 1970, following a lockout lasting six and a half months. The final deal provided for a 36% rise for junior officials compared to a 23% rise for their senior colleagues. And of course, even the most disappointing pay settlement was far better than anything that could have been secured if there had been no union to make the case for the younger staff. The union's commitment to its younger members was brought to a new level in 2007 with the creation of the National Youth Committee with representatives drawn from across the union. And since IBOA transformed into the Financial Services Union, this representative structure has been extended to encourage new forms of activism through the Young Workers Network. These changes have been necessary to respond to the continuing evolution of the financial services sector, especially in the wake of the banking crisis, which has presented particular difficulties for young workers in terms of reductions in net pay and benefits as well as fewer promotional opportunities following major restructuring programs. Another overhang from the financial crash which continues to pose particular difficulties for younger workers is the lack of affordable accommodation. While depressed pay and negative equity are a lethal combination for many workers the prospect of renewed house price inflation again threatens to compound the problem for younger workers in particular. That's why trade union representation has never been more vital and the Financial Services Union is actively gearing itself up to meet the challenges of the rapidly changing landscape for financial service workers in the Republic of Ireland, 
Northern Ireland and Britain.